So on the last day of our month, a roster has dropped. Guys, welcome to the Africans. We do Canadian African content because we the Africans we didn't do so. So let's get into this. Also, yes, subscribe if you like the content, all the fun stuff. Canada Soccer has unveiled a very lovely squad for the CONCACAF U17s. Now, that FIFA tournament's happening in November, uh, but the CONCACAF tournament is happening in February, in about 11, 12 days. They have released a preliminary squad. Now, the, the squad is 23 players. Now, you can only bring 20 players to the tournament officially. We have seen Canada in the past bring additional players for training, so you can go go full 11 on 11s if you have to, or 10 on 10s if you must, and be able to rotate your players rest. So what is more likely than not is that the 23 players that we do see here more than likely are the 23 players who will be going down to the U17 tournaments that's happening. So I think for me, the way that I'm reading it, just looking at this, it feels as if they are going to be the team going to Guatemala. And let's go over the players right now. Some interesting names to go through. Let's talk about it. So goalkeepers, we've got Nathaniel Abraham, TFC Academy. Alexander O'Brien, also TFC Academy. Richard Chukwu, Toronto FC. Are the Chukwu's just taking over all the youth programs? I'm not opposed to it, but hey, do it up. Victor Fung from Inter Miami. Um, interesting dual national in US, Canada. Let's see what we can do with that. Etienne Baudin. Godet uh, from Academy to CF Montreal. Simon Ordiero from Sigma FC, one of the two. I'm going to count the other one as a uh, League One player, even though the other one has had a move. He's there. Chimera Umezi, TFC Academy. Lazar Stefanovic, TFC Academy. Gal Motigny, uh, Montreal. Aiden Fong, Theo Rogolopoulos. Regopolis. If I butcher your name, I apologize. I'm doing my best. All right, Javon Badwal, Vancouver Whitecaps. Aiden Fung also from the Whitecaps. Alejandro Biello, Montreal. Ruben de Sa from Victoria, F Soccer Club out in Portugal. Andre Dimitru, TFC. Mateo Andicho Correa, TFC again. Liam McKenzie, Vancouver, Antoine and Jai, Academy, Bear, Ibrahim Higazi, Rayo Vallejo. I definitely butchered that. I'm sorry. In Spain, Anthony Kulkowski from Warsaw, Lucas Ozimek from TFC, Eric Pop, formerly of League One, now in Bundesliga 2, and then Tyler Bojvodic from Bojvodic or Bojvodic. I'm not sure. I apologize again from Whitecaps. So that's the 23 players that are there. Now you'll notice there's a theme. Most of the players that you're hearing are from MLS academies. Probably the easiest thing to study, track, and recruit. We do have some interesting names coming from overseas. I know that a lot of people are looking at Ibrahim Higazi. He's a dual Canadian Egyptian, and that's going to be an interesting battle between both federations to see how they're able to do. Getting into this camp is a good first step. Nothing is guaranteed in recruitment, but hey, you got them in. They get to see what they get to do and kind of continues to trend with players who have seen some time with other teams and are coming in. They're actually able to play, right? We saw that with uh, Greater Zuhir. Uh, we had Morocco and Canada, and then chose to play with Canada at the CONCACAF U20s. So we've seen them starting to pull a few more in. I think the importance of having camps, the importance of running teams, it's very important to get those types of players in, right? But Ibrahim Higazi, he is an interesting, because I, the last Egyptian Canadian we had was Omar Marouche, who we lost out to um, and is doing well. The Wolfsburg winger um, had a chance, but it was feeling more Egyptian, which is fine. Again, like we said, we're not going to get every duel, but the question is just get into, make sure you're having these conversations, but start from the beginning. Right, there's that player. So, Higazi is one. 
Kukowski is another one playing in Poland. Eric Pop just getting his move, and something that I mentioned earlier on Twitter. Lee Huan is low-key setting players, both on the men's and the women's side. It's becoming a nice pathway for teams and players to get over. And the question is going to be, is there another level that can keep these young players in the country for a little bit longer? Or are they better off just leaving as soon as they can? And that's where you have a conversation with uh, whether it's CPL, having like a CPL 2, or having something, another league in between League One, but above League One, but underneath the CPL. That's a, a championship type tier. We'll see how that goes. But he got his interesting Eric Pop, who just recently went over back here playing. Ruben Desai is another name that I'm curious. Again, on the outside, because there are names that I'm not as familiar with, right? If you follow academies or you follow people who follow academies, you know you hear good things, whether you know, whether it's Richard Chuku who's playing well, whether it's Alex O'Brien who's played well at TFC, whether it's Etienne Godin who's played well. Like you, you hear certain things, but then when it comes to players who are outside, it is a bit curious. Well, of these 23 players, Bordiero, who uh, Simon, who's at Sigma FC, there's I think five of the 23 aren't MLS Academy players, which makes it very interesting to track and to take a look at. So that being the case, the tournament is happening February 11th. And I'm very much curious to see how they're able to work through this. It's Edgio Olivieri who is coaching this team and off the senior staff. We saw Bielo deal with the U20s, Olivieri taking the U17. It would be a very interesting. We know that on a national team level, they're good teachers for what they do, but are they able to condense this? and get players to, their, to play their strengths. I mean, every tournament is an opportunity to recruit, but also it's will be interesting to see the talent that's coming out of MLS Academies, but furthermore, the talent, those other players who have gone international to see how those are able to mesh. We weren't able to see any of them on the pitch together, but I am very much curious to see. So if you're wondering the schedule, first game, Canada is in the group with Trinidad, Barbados, and the United States. So the first game is at is February the 11th against Trinidad and Tobago. Their second matchup is two days later against Barbados. And then on the 15th, they're playing the United States. And it's the same type of format that we had for all the CONCACAF championships. So top three teams in your group make it. So Canada just doesn't have to finish it last and they're on their way going. Canada enters this actually ranked fifth in the CONCACAF for this week. So it will be interesting to see. They're ranked fifth, so they're gonna have to come up against a team, more than likely um, a Honduras, a Costa Rica, or a United States, the kind of test. But that doesn't mean that they are better. At the U17, you have a lot of talented players, but then you see that talent shine through a little bit better than say at the U20, whether that's talent that plateaus or whatnot. So it'll be interesting to see what happens moving forward. So again, Canada is in Group F, and top three moves you across into the round of 16. There's already four teams there, pre-qualifiers as well. So third place will have them, if they finish in third, it has them playing the uh, runner-up of Group H, and then if they win that, more than likely the winner of Group E. If they finish in second, they'll play the runner the third place of Group F and then play the group winner of Group G. And then if they win Group F, they'll play the runner-up of Group G or the third place team of Group E if they are able to beat the Dominican Republic. Just kind of run through the groups again. If you aren't familiar, Group E, and we're starting at E because again, there was a pre-tournament qualifiers. So Group A, B, C, and D were already taken. That's so why there's four teams in the round 16. So we got Group B, which has Mexico, Panama, Guatemala, who are the hosts, and Curaçao. I look forward to all the talk between them. Uh, group F, the aforementioned group with Canada, the United States, Trinidad and Tobago, and Barbados. Group G has Costa Rica, Jamaica, Cuba, and Guadeloupe. And then Group H, El Salvador, Haiti, Honduras, Suriname. Loki, I'm actually curious about that group. 
Haiti has been low key very good at developing, but the turmoil in the country hasn't let it shine through as well as it could. El Salvador is always good. Honduras has been very consistent at this level. And Suriname is a team that is trying to find their footing. So Group H can be very much an interesting group to watch. Um, as for the games where they'll be played, if you're in Canada, One Soccer will have the games on demand, but also the CONCACAF channel should have the games on YouTube um, playing, if not, there'll be other indications from there. But that is who I'm looking forward to. Um, if you think there's someone else we should be looking forward to and tracking during this tournament, you let me know. I am curious to see and what you're thinking will be those groups. So we're gonna take a look at that, we'll watch that. But again, 11 days to go, that roster's dropped. We're looking forward to the uh, senior team for when they drop their, for the women to drop their roster for the Sheep Leaves Cup. But yeah, this is what we have for the U-17s. More than likely, this whole squad is heading to Guatemala. And with that being the case, the question is, will they be able to finish? Again, just like the men's, top four are headed towards the uh, FIFA World Cup, the under 17s World Cup, which is happening in November. So, if they make the round of 16, they're two wins away to guarantee their spot. So, you just need to win two games if they make that. It'll be hard because you're going to face a group winner somewhere. But we have an opportunity to continue to grow and see some more players on our quest as we prepare to host the Men's World Cup in 2026. Guys, who are you looking forward to in this tournament? What players in Canada are you earmarking to have a good time? Or what other teams are you looking forward to? You let me know. I'm gonna stop rambling here, guys. <laughs> and have a good day.